Hi and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman, a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This podcast is for those of you who are wanting to really rock your life and health and live from a place of prevention. Let's get into today's episode. Your body gets to a point where your adrenal glands are so tired, flogging it at the gym and too much exercise and running and all those kind of things ends up being counterproductive to replenishing your adrenal glands. And what I know as a naturopath is that mindful movement can replenish chi that has been depleted. And I am excited to be here with Dr. Alice McKinnon, my loving wife. She's the little stillness ninja. And we're going to talk today about replenishing chi with exercise. So welcome. Thank you, Hmm. Mrs. Jen, for having me on your wonderful podcast. Yeah. So before we get into it, I want to give a bit of background how naturopaths, we think of it with Chinese medicine kind of thinking about qi. So we say that you're born with a certain amount of qi and that qi lives inside of your adrenal glands. Now, we spend a bit of adrenal energy every day and then we put it back in, then we spend it and put it back in. The problem is it's like so many people's bank accounts, they spend more than they put back in. And, and when we run out of chi, you die, Woo! just like that. So right through our life, we're meant to be replenishing chi all the time. And we say that your chi is replenished when your adrenal glands do their recharging, which is kind of between 2 and 4 a.m. And so many people do broken sleep, which we see as the first sign of adrenal tiredness. So if someone is getting to that stage and, and they're starting to see things like crappy sleep and crappy energy and crappy moods and crappy weight, all that crap, which is the adrenal tide kind of signs, and I've been there... And and the, their mind might naturally think, oh, I'm, I'm I'm gaining weight and I'm tired. I should just exercise more. And, and but they go and flog themselves at the gym and and go running and stuff. But their body is too tired to do that. And you, Mrs. Alice, mm. are a, a mindfulness, you know, and stillness ninja. You, I see you. You live the kind of exercises that are replenishing to the body all the time. And you still surf and you beach run and all those things. You do all that, all things, yeah. but you really balance it out mm, with I those think. kind of um, styles of exercise, if, to put it that way. So first off, so welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Mrs. Jen. Lovely to be here. So for the people who haven't heard from you before, mm. tell us a bit about your background mm. and coming from that because you've always done the exercise kind mm. of thing but coming across to that stillness yeah replenishing kind of side tell yeah. us that story yeah thank you Jen uh yes I have a lifetime of of physical exercise and in fact I think it got me through you know childhood trauma mm. actually I was always a runner um sprinter high jumper ball games netball hockey did it all did mm. it all for a long long time and in fact Right up until I turned 50, I was still running the stairs at Corumban, at the alley, 100 stairs there, up and down, thrashing myself. Thrashing yourself. I really was. And and up until then, I had a body that enjoyed that. It felt good doing that. Uh, but then I just, I listened to my body around about that time. And it could happen at any time. Mm. But it's really common that women's bodies get tired around 50 because yeah. our body's trying to do the whole menopausy changes anyway right. and so the reason that we experience a shitty menopause is or a crappy menopause is we arrive there tired yeah or tired yeah 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 so it could have been just a combo of that kind of yeah. stuff sorry to interject but that's all right favorite. that's all right and I just heard my body saying that it didn't want to do those mm. sweaty stair runs and the sweaty soft sand beach runs anymore it didn't want to flog itself anymore and I I had to listen. I listened, which is kind of weird. <laughs> she doesn't usually. No, she does. <laughs> I mean, just have to say, I've been all that good at listening to my body. I've been through my whole life. I've pushed my body hard mm. exercising because it's my way of moving stress and tension through me. Mental yes. stress and tension. I'll move it through my body, which is a good thing. But yes. I have tended to overdo it to the point of just exhaustion at times. Mm. So that's a little bit about my background. And I was originally a aerobics instructor in the 80s because she I did. Was, she wore the lycra and did the whole woo, thing. 
I did <laughs> because I was such a terrible waitress that it was the only way I could get myself through uni was teaching aerobics rather than waitressing. That's <laughs> a crack up. Um, yeah, and so I've loved physical movement all my life. I did listen to my body around about 50 and I pulled back quite significantly for a while and then when my body was ready again, it said, yeah, we're happy to go for a bit of a run on the beach now and then on the hard sand mm -hmm. and no, we don't want to do those what, those stairs anymore. But So I introduced into my life, I've been doing yoga for a really long time, well over 30 years. Mm. I came to it in my mid-20s and I loved it. Of course, I gravitated towards Ashtanga and the more... Physical, physical kind of yoga forms of yoga but yep. really since about my 50s I've met qigong mm. I've met gentle yoga I've met I continue to do some ashtanga yoga but I can I also listen much more carefully to my body and mm. what it wants to do and I do love it's a dynamic balance it's not a strict regimented must do this this day must do this the other day I you to There's your body. a kind of a flow mm. between what my body wants. So, for, for example, today we went out and had a surf. We did. And oftentimes I'll go for a run after a surf, but today my body didn't want to do that, and so I went for a walk on the beach. Mm. And this afternoon I'll do some qigong and I'll give my body a break because yesterday it felt tired running along the beach mm. and I thought, mm, I'm not going to push it today. Notice that. So yeah. noticing things is really important and so in naturopaths kind of world, when we get to that point that our body is core tired, it's more things like the walk, not run. It's the mm. Tai Chi, the Qi Gong, the yoga, the Pilates, those things yeah. that are more restorative than taxing. So yeah. why, what is your, because I, 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 my brain gets bored in yoga, yep. yet I know it's great for me. Uh, but Qi Gong, I, ah, yeah, you introduced Qigong. me to Qi Gong and it's it's really cool. It's, I much prefer it to yeah. Tai Chi. Why why Qi Gong for you? It's my secret weapon. Ooh, yeah. I think this ninja has a secret weapon. It, <laughs> it really is. I I came to it by accident really when some of the people at the community centre where I teach my classes mm. They asked for Tai Chi quite a quite a few years ago now, and I said to them, "Look, I don't think I can learn Tai Chi quickly, but mm. I think I could I could start to learn Qigong as we go and mm. offer classes because there's a lot of series in Tai Chi. There's a lot of remembering to do, yeah, like sequences and sequences meant to do. and things. That's right, yeah. and." I've never, I've been drawn to Tai Chi and every time I've gone to do Tai Chi, it's done my head in because I can't That's remember nice. all the pernickety little moves. I absolutely respect and love the people who do it. Yep. Love but Qigong it. is, it is more a most my beautiful flow. thing. But Qigong is like a moving meditation. So you mm. repeat movements over and over again. And so it has a mixture of, it It calls up energy. Mm -hmm. It's great for energy building it's great for stress release it's great for releasing tension it's also wonderful for stretching there are some great stretches in it mm -hmm. there's great leg strength strengtheners it's an amazing it, it has fitness a it's like a whole body oh exercise God, yeah like literally i feel you feel your muscles kind of uh pumped yep at the end of it like blood just moves yeah. everywhere really well but at the same time you feel Mentally, I feel mentally alert and relaxed. And relaxed. It is. It's a really cool form of exercise. If you really haven't checked is. it out, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and it's restorative. It's absolutely restorative. So what you said about the chi gen, it builds chi. It builds mm. daily chi. That's what we want. We want to build our chi because it's not getting restored properly yeah. or replenished properly in our sleep. For yeah. So many people. And in qigong, we say that the chi resides in our lower belly, our dantian, and also in the adrenal kidney areas. Mm. So we spend a fair bit of our practice replenishing chi mm. in those areas, and um, that feels amazing. And the other thing about it is if your I mean I've practiced sitting meditation now for 10 years prior to that I could not for love or money sit still mm. 
She's so, a bit of an energizer bunny. I was, I was, and sometimes I still can be. And so qigong is great if you have trouble doing sitting meditation mm. because you still get the benefits of meditation, but you do it through flows, through very slow, effortless mm. movements. Um, you can do qigong. Mostly we do it standing, but if you've got issues around standing, you can absolutely do it in a chair. Mm. Yeah, you can do it sitting down. Yeah. Um, it's great for all ages of people. Yep. And it is absolutely nourishing and replenishing and restorative mm. for the nervous system, for chi, for the mind, body, brain, heart, complex, everything. Mm. And it's it's, a, it's joyful. It's like it is. it is. It's a really I find it a light form of exercise that uses my whole body. And the flowy yeah. part, you feel, I feel the the more flexibility and things come to me as I do it. Absolutely. Cool. The, it's, your range of it's, movement. The range of movement is amazing. It works with joints. If you're working, if you're working with injuries, it's you can you can modify movements to protect any areas. But a lot of it is just about moving energy through the body. So mm. through joints, through muscles, through bones, nourishing bones. Um, you know, calming the mind, steadying the heart, nourishing the heart, nourishing the kidneys. Oh my goodness, it's it's great. Yeah. Well, we say, you know, like aches and pains is just stagnant energy. Yes, it is. That's exactly that's so, exactly what Qigong yeah, says. Uh, yeah, flowy. Oh, and does Qigong say that too? Yeah, that's perhaps we absolutely. do too. Yeah. Yes, stagnant energy. Yeah. yeah. So anything you can do to move that, and I love it because it it's gentle movement it is and it's it all not go, hard yeah energy. it's gentle movement um it it works very closely in alignment with the breath mm. so the breath and the movement all work together to create this state of strength and flow and calmness and awake and focus mm. very good there's some and there's lots of different types of qigong exercises some are for focus some are for moving stagnant energy some are for joints some are for alertness some of them are for making clear decisions for clarity mm. so what um if you go to the show notes you'll be able to find i'm going to put links there to some of alice's classes online for free that you can just go on and play along with before I, I, I say the website for that, mm. um, just talking on breath for a moment, because when, yes. when you take people through the class, initially you've got, you have us breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Yes. And then when we come to the actual flows, yes. it becomes in through the nose and out through the nose. That's right. What's Most, that about? The, the general rule around that is so when we start off in Qigong, we breathe in through the nose because nose breathing is by far the most healthy thing. Absolutely. To do. It filters the air. Um, it does um, a myriad of good things for us. We breathe out through the mouth in that early part of the practice because we're purging or letting go of stale energy. Right. And we do that through the mouth. Yep. Then when we get to the flows and we're breathing in and out through the nose, then we're building chi. We're nourishing right. our bodies and nourishing our chi and building that up. So in and out through our nose um, builds chi. That's right. Light. Yeah, it's great. It's I great. love it. Before before we kind of go to the website and things, Jen, I did also want to say a word about gentle yoga. Please as well, Because we all know, we've all seen, you know, pretzel poses and the very, stuff I don't want to do in yoga. And very, thin, <laughs> very <laughs> lean people doing amazing headstands, headstands and, and, and yeah, all sorts of wondrous things. things. And, and that's all great. You know, yoga, yoga has mainstreamed. I mean, what an incredible gift mm. to give the world. Thank you, India. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And the ancient sages and... And that's very breath-based as well. Absolutely. And it's about flow, moving energy and flow through the body. It's also generally about um, it's got those awkward poses where we are resting in our breath and it's teaching us that even when we're out in the world and difficult, awkward, hard things occur, the breath will take us through mm. if we can remain focused on the breath. Right. So that's all great. Um, a few years ago, I started to teach gentle yoga, mm. 
Um, and that is all floor based. Yeah. Um, and my focus on gentle yoga is very much about nourishing the nervous system. Mm. We move very slowly. We take our time through postures and in between postures. Our, we, we're breathing deeply the whole way through. And I have to say, for someone who is has a busy body, <laughs> she has a busy body. Um, I'll gentle, say it too. Gentle yoga has been a revelation to me about mm-hmm. its capacity to nourish the nervous system and restore. And restore. Um, it, I, I just love, I teach one class a week of it and I just love teaching it because it. I do you it get the as benefit well. As I well. get the benefit as well. And yeah. the people who come are different to the usual yoga type people. Yeah. Um, people who are experiencing anxiety, burnout, depression, uh, you know, it's such a too busy a mind, all of those sorts of things. And we all finish the class. It's an hour-long class and we're all in a state of bliss, mm. calmness, yeah. open-heartedness. But still with a mental awakeness. And a, very much a clarity. Yeah. 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 And awakeness, absolutely. Mm. So relaxing, but... To put in a word about that, and yeah. and certainly Tai Chi, Pilates, these are all things that we can go to. Whatever suits your temperament, yeah, absolutely, and whatever your body enjoys, yeah, that it's a chance. Each of these practices is a chance to really listen to our body. I just want to say this, Jen, you asked about the breath. So, in my yoga classes and in my Qigong classes, I say to people. Let give your mind, the mind is ambitious. The mind is, it wants an important job to do. Right. You know, it just wants a really important job to do. So I suggest to people that they ask their ambitious mind to focus on their breath Mm -hmm. so that their mind can, and that's a very important job. Yeah. It's possibly the most important job in those practices. And the mind loves that. So, you know, we ask the mind to feel the breath pass across our nostrils as we inhale and as we exhale to feel the breath pass out of the mouth or out of out of the nose again. And so we can occupy the mind, Mm. give it that important job to do. And then through the physical practice, we can then that inner, the inner observer Mm. who is not the mind but is something far bigger and deeper and more wondrous and eternal, that that observer can then work with the body mm. without the mind getting in the way and come and saying, come on, come on, you stretched further than that last week. Come on, come on, come on, you can do better. Yeah. The mind is busy focusing on the breath and then that inner observer can work with directly with the body and say and be kind. Mm. And say to the body, here we are. Would you like would you like to go a little bit further, body? Oh, no, okay, you don't. All right. Would you like to pull back a bit? Would you like to do this at half pace? Would you like to do this? And so you can So you can feel your body yes, better because you're so present in it? Absolutely. And right. you can have this incredibly intimate conversation with the body where it is focused on kindness to Mm. the body. And as we focus on kindness to ourselves, we grow our capacity then to be kind to others because we know what that feels like. Yes. Mm. Cool. So, Dr. Alice, you have got a website full of really cool free online classes you can go to. I do. Uh, I'm going to put some links directly in the show notes, which is healthylifehacks.com.au. You can go there to find them. But what's the best way for people to find you and follow your work? Because you do amazing one-on-one coaching with people. You do corporate speaking. You run workshops, retreats and things. You, yeah. you do so much cool work out there in the world. What's the easiest way for people? And her reels, guys, check out her reels. Follow her on social media. What's the best way for people to find and follow you? They can find me on social media. They can find me as as Alice Iona McKinnon or Alice McKinnon, M-A-C. Yep, K-O-N-N-O-N on Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, can go to my website, which is aliceionamckinnon.com. And if they go to work with me and classes, Yep. All my online classes are in that section. Yep. Uh, they can always 
email or message me via those places. Yep. Yeah, and I do do one-on-one coaching. I run public retreats. Um, I do corporate speaking and workshops and training and all sorts of things. I love working with people and organisations. Yeah, so if you need a little stillness ninja in your life, check her out. But definitely start following Alice and all of her her reels and things. She gives so much value. There's so much information you've put out to the world. It's awesome. Thank you. Mm. So your healthy life hack is stop flogging yourself if it's tired. Think about being gentle with yourself, still moving your body, but doing it mindfully with things like Qigong and yoga. That's it. You're out of here. Thank See you, Mrs. Jen. Alice. Thank you, Mrs. Jen. It's <laughs> been a pleasure. Awesome, guys. Catch you on the next episode. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed my podcast, please let me know by leaving a review on Apple Podcast. Every month, I draw one lucky person who leaves a review on Apple Podcasts to have a free one-hour consultation with me. Be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you're tuning in from so that you always catch the next episode. And if you would like to receive a free copy of my Feed Your Body ebook, simply click the link in the comments below. Join my newsletter and we will get that free ebook sent to you. I welcome your emails and you can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, remember, when it comes to life, live it, love it, and get on with it.